Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Long Distance Work Life Podcast. My name is Wayne Termel. I'm your humble host today. We are Marissa Free because we are going to talk to Ian P Park, who is one of the muckamucks at a company called Stock Press. Here on the podcast, we talk about remote work, technology, leadership, and generally just surviving this remote work thing. And I had a really interesting conversation with Ian about document management and workflow control and generally collaborating over distance. I think you're really going to enjoy it. So have a listen. Hey, everybody. Uh, this week on the Long Distance Work Life podcast, we are talking to Ian Parks from StockPress.com. And, and our topic today is workflow and collaboration, and getting stuff done. Ian happens to head up a software company that tackles that problem. Ian, why don't you tell them a little bit about you and StockPress, and then we'll get to the guts of this conversation. Sure. Sounds good, Wayne. And uh, thanks for having me on. Um, yeah, we run a company called StockPress. Um, we're a, a cloud file sharing and management platform for teams. Um, we created the platform off the back of um, a need that we had ourselves. And I think probably to explain the story of StockPress in the best possible way, it requires to go back a couple of steps. Um, and I will try and give you the Reader's Digest version of this as opposed to the, uh, the lengthy one. But um, for a long time now, I've been running an agency um, with my colleague Jess, um, Jessica Story. Um, we've also got a couple of co-founders who um, we ran that business with as well, um, Bart and Camilla. Um, we have worked together probably collectively for about 12 years. Um, in that period of time, Jessica has met Bart and Camilla twice. They uh, live and work in Poland. Um, Jessica grew up in New York, um, moved to Florida um, a couple of years ago. Um, and myself, I grew up in the UK, lived in the UK and kind of got to know uh, Jess through um, a, an old friend of mine. So we all came from very different backgrounds. We all do very different things. We like to say collectively that between us, we kind of make one good person, um, one kind of mega person, if as it were, um, and kind of bring different skills to the table. And with the agency, we're doing a lot of digital development for people, a lot of design for people, but it was always remote. And I think the biggest thing for us was that it wasn't just our team that was remote, it was our clients that were remote. and. Um, very much scattered around the world. Um, so I think what we found as an agency was that the biggest challenge we had was that we were in the delivery business. And as an agency, we were very focused on uh, delivering to the brief of the client and actually giving them the things that they needed. So the client relationship is very interesting when you're in an agency because you do the dance to try and win the business of the client. Then when you get the client on board, really all they want to know is where are the things that we've requested, where are the things that we've asked for. And we got involved in this kind of consistent battle between a million and one platforms to be able to share um, the deliverables with the clients or for the clients to be able to share the deliverables with us. And a deliverable. Okay, so I, I yeah. want to stop you there because there's a couple of things that I want to sure. pin there. <laughs> right. <laughs> one is that you are living proof, as are we at Kevin Eikenberry Group and Remote Leadership Institute, that it is possible to build really solid working relationships when you are not kind of in the same place at the same yes. time over a long period of time. It's entirely possible. Uh, the second thing that I'm hearing is it's this idea of, and I'm going through this with several clients at the moment, where we use this platform, we use this platform, we're using this over here, and there isn't one ring to rule them all. And so, I mean, you had to solve a problem yourself, and that's where yep. this software came from. Can you, you know, very briefly tell us what exactly the problem was you were solving for, and what was the solution? Certainly. So the problem that we had was that 
because clients because clients were using different platforms to share things with us and were running different platforms themselves we kept getting roadblocked by things like file size limits being able to transfer si uh, files of uh, particularly large sizes um, through the platforms that they were using a lot of the the platforms that the, the clients had um, were kind of per per user license based which presents a, a problem in the first place because you have to then decide you know who you're going to add into your platform and do you want to do that because there's extra cost involved um, and I think the single biggest problem above and, and beyond all of that was the duplication of files unnecessarily dupl duplication of files which effectively means that in any platform the storage increases and actually the cost increases so we had those three kind of central things that we wanted to look at to make it easier to bring people together to actually rather than send the files out to the people a key tenant of what we thought is actually let's bring the people to the files a much better way of doing it a more centralized approach and i think the third thing was taking from some of the industry players that we look at and we've got this term respect your elders look up to your elders and our elders just happen to be dropbox google drive OneDrive on the kind of farm management end of the market and then when it goes to the kind of enterprise level uh, you're looking at kind of binder a brand folder now those guys do something very clever which is you have one file that can live in multiple locations without ever being duplicated on the file management side of things dropbox box google drive that doesn't tend to be the case if you want to share things with people you have to duplicate the file put it in a new folder that means there are then two versions or more versions of the same file so they were the kind of the, the big things that we wanted to to solve okay so let's that sounds fascinating. Of course, we urge folks to go to stockpress.co if they are, in fact, you know, interested in that. But let's talk about the nuts and bolts. You work with organizations all the time. Uh, what are the biggest challenges in collaboration and information sharing that you see on remote and hybrid teams? Yeah, absolutely. I think there are some really interesting trends that we're seeing at the moment. Um, I think one of the key trends is um, around people's routine. I think what we've seen with people going more remote, more hybrid, is that their daily routine and what the times at which they like to be able to work are actually becoming more, impo more important now than ever before. So if you were going into an office, you were there nine to five, everyone was kind of on the same page to begin with. But I think what actually has happened is the, the kind of boundaries have been blurred between working from home, working kind of anywhere, um, and not going into an office is that people are trying to work better around their own schedule. For instance, I know that I work much better in the morning than I do in the afternoon. So I try and get certain tasks done in the AM rather than the PM. And I think why that's important is that it's about making information available to everyone on their schedule. And that means making it centralized. It means basically being able to get everyone in and around that information and being able to work on with and uh, on that information in their own time, but in a way that everyone can kind of touch it, see what's happening and, and, and all get on the same page. And I think fundamentally what we're doing with remote work and we are a part of the tech stack. Um, this is the way that we view ourselves, is that we're trying to recreate an office, albeit we're doing it remotely from everywhere in the world and give people all of that technology that allows them to feel like they're experiencing that office environment, being very close to people, but to achieve it in a more efficient way that suits these new routines that they're trying to um, create and live by. Well, Let's use your example. I mean, you've got people in Europe, you've got people in the UK, you've got people on the East Coast of the US. Yeah. Uh, those of us who live on the West Coast know the business day was not designed for the likes of us. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Europe and the East Coast can coexist. Yeah. It gets really ugly when you dial us in. Uh, but that's to that point of flexible work. How do you as a company decide 
here's information that we need to share and work on asynchronously. Here's when we need to get together. How do you guys make that, that call? It's a very interesting question. And actually, I think it comes back to something that you said early on about the fact that we've worked in a remote organization now for the best part of 10 years. Obviously, COVID very much changed that situation. I think, you know, in business, you have to have that moment where you get lucky. And I put massive inverted commas around getting lucky. I would 100% wish the pandemic hadn't happened. It just so happened that we were in a, a really interesting spot for our software to become more kind of important at the time. But we're I in the same boat at Remote Leadership Institute. People go, boy, you guys are really lucky you were in the right place at the right time. Yeah. And I go, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's, yeah, and and here's, a, here's a very human example of that. I haven't seen my parents for three years because of the situation, because of that, that kind of, um, you know, with everything that's going on, you know, would I trade that in to be able to go and see them versus the, the luck that we had at the, this moment in time? 100%. But, you know, we'll roll with it and, and actually, you know, we, I think we, we look at our business in a very different way now. But to, to come back to the question, I think it's about creating trust. And the one thing that working remotely has done is it's brought each other, everyone into each other's homes. And in a very strange way, that accelerates, or certainly what we found is that that accelerates two things. It accelerates trust between people, because I think actually you feel like you get to know someone a little bit more because you can see a background, you can, can kind of get a sense of life going on around people. I think the other thing is it does is it accelerates relationships, because actually when you're speaking one-to-one -one in a, a video call, there isn't that kind of distraction around you. You know, you tend to get to the heart of the matter much more quickly because, you know, you've got no one around you that's chipping into a conversation or, you know, you tend to talk one on one and, and be very honest about each other. So I think what we take from that into our working practice is that streamlined nature of it. And and actually, we try and reduce the amount of meetings that we do. And I think this is a key trend that we're going to see going forwards is fewer meetings more action-based kind of collaboration so like not talking about the task working on the task together and i think that's really where we're trying to fit into this landscape is to be a tool that allows people to have everything they need to be able to use to work on a task together much more efficiently so fewer meetings everyone being able to access the information according to the role that they play within the organization, but just making it very easy to have arbiters of the information that can allow people in. So that's the central tenant of it is how can we support actionable collaboration as opposed to have a meeting, go away, do something, then come back to another meeting and hope that it's right. You just said something that is super critical and sent a shiver up my spine. Uh, and that is this idea that somebody needs to be the arbiter of who has access, where does stuff sit, uh, that kind of thing. And I know that one of the hardest things on team collaboration is where is this, who's in charge, who has access, who doesn't. Can you give us a very short kind of description of how do you decide who that arbiter is and what are the guidelines that they yep. have to put in place? So we have a saying at, at Stock Press, which is configuration, not customization. And I think this is a big thing that hopefully answers that question, is that within an organization, there is always going to be someone that plays the role of um, you know, traffic cop. The, the person that's moving things around and, and facilitating the way that people work. So we understand that within an organization. So certainly the way that we did that with stock press is, is we tried to make as much of the, the, the kind of toolkit for managing and sharing those files as flexible as possible. So we have unlimited users in all of our packages, which means that you can get everyone into a platform to begin with. When those people come into the platform, they can be assigned a certain role. 
and the administrator of the platform can choose what that role looks like. They can uh, make it as flexible as they want um, according to the access that people need and, and the, the um, capabilities that people need. They can also be assigned to a team. So what we're trying to do with, uh, with file management is bring in some of these kind of the uh, themes from kind of Slack, where you can be in a, a wider channel with people, you can do one-to-many communication of something. Not a lot of file management platforms have that, if any. Um, so again, I think there's how you organize the people in the first place, then it's about being able to be flexible around what they can see in the first place. And then the third part of that element is um, what can they do with those files? Because for us, and, and this is a live example, bearing in mind, we kind of ran our agency for three years whilst we we're building and then using StockPress to make sure that it did exactly what we hoped it would do. Um, is that actually, you know, those roles kind of play out, they do change, they're very fluid and the ability to be able to change them kind of on the move because actually someone needs to be able to have additional um, responsibility or, you know, a, a additional kind of role to play within um, a, a task or a project. Um, you wanna be able to change that yourself and on the go rather than be limited by, you know, either, limited roles in the first place or having to reach out to the software platform and say hey could you customize this for us because actually it doesn't quite fit our needs so you know the only reason that we could build the platform in this way and look at configuration in the first place was that we knew what it was like to work in this kind of agile way and actually we didn't really realize it at the time when we we're building it but the agile nature of our business I think is something that a lot of people are kind of coached around. It's just that our default was to be agile as opposed to, you know, have these kind of stringent kind of parameters set around us. Okay, so we are at the end of our time, but there's one thing you and I in our pre-recorded conversation uh, talked about something real quick. Naming conventions. <laughs> what is the biggest mistake people make with naming conventions and what's one thing that will cure the problem <laughs> oh, right now? Such a pertinent question. So we've just written an article about this, actually. So number one thing is, is actually having the capability to be able to apply naming conventions to the files in the first place. And this is where we, we hope to straddle, and we think we do, this, this kind of line between traditional file management platforms and digital asset management platforms at the enterprise level is the ability for people to apply data to those assets, whether it's through manual tagging um, or whether it's through AI. Um, we have some AI tools in the platform to be able to do that. But the main thing that we see is that people get very excited about the ability to apply extra data to things to make them searchable the tendency is that they go too far. So they're gonna tag everything. They're gonna have a million custom categories. And actually what we find is that keep it simple, work out who the people are that are going to be searching for it and think about the kind of behaviors within the company and the, the kind of language of the people that are using the technology, because then you can really help refine that search as you go along. And I think the key with it as well is it's a living and breathing thing you know, return to it, see what people are searching for, see what people are finding and refine the language and the naming conventions that are around files um, to, to make it more refined as you go along. Um, thank you so much. That's so important. And, and I'm afraid we're at the end of our time. Uh, thank you so much, Ian Parks from Stock Press. Uh, I really appreciate that. For those of you listening, I hope you heard what he said, which is you don't just set up a naming convention and thus is it so for the rest of time. You have to keep going back and asking, does this work? <laughs> and what could work better and all, all of that good stuff. Ian, thank you so much. We will have links to your bio and stock press and all of that good stuff in the show notes. Uh, for those of you looking for a solution like this, come visit us at longdistanceworklife.com. The show notes will have links to all those things. Ian, thanks for being with me, man. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks for having me. 
That's it. Thank you to Ian Park from StockPress.co. Thank you for listening. If you would like to find links to StockPress or anything that we've talked about along with uh, transcription and show notes, join us at longdistanceworklife.com. Of course, if you want help keeping the weasels at bay, we urge you to subscribe and like. You guys listen to podcasts, you know how this works, as well as uh, tell your friends. Word of mouth is really what spreads these things. So thank you for listening. My name is Wayne Turmel. Thank you for listening to the Long Distance Work Life. Have a great week.